According to Good Our Eggs, the average retail price of Ozempic is about one thousand dollars per dose. For those who are taking this drug once a week off label for weight loss and not for diabetes, insurance is not going to cover it. Now, losing ten to fifteen percent of body weight in six to nine months. Converts to about twenty six thousand to forty thousand dollars. Is that worth the price tag? Now, welcome back this week. The media and the medical community keep portraying Ozempic as the game changer for weight loss. Is that so? Now, Ozempic and other drugs in the same class help non diabetic people lose weight by making them feel full. So they will eat less and lose weight over time. Now the drug works by acting as something called GLP-1 analog. Let's take a look here. What is GLP-1 analog? GLP-1 is primarily secreted from the L cells of the small intestine. Now when food enters the small intestine, the L cells are stimulated and release GLP-1 into the bloodstream. And it also has been found to be produced in other tissues such as the pancreas and the brain. But the L cells of the small intestines are the primary source of GLP-1 in the body. And GLP-1 uh, causes weight loss by delaying gastric emptying. It slows down the rate at which food leaves the stomach, which can help to increase feeling of fullness and reduce food intake. And GLP-1 also adds on the brain to reduce feeling of hunger, suppress appetite, and promote satiety. Now, as someone who is overweight. I know the struggle, and the struggle to fight food temptation is so real, because I know eating can be very satisfying. I would jump on the Olympic weight loss journey if I didn't know better. But if the main goal is to suppress appetite, is there a better way than jabbing yourself every week, or a cheaper way to do that? Well, the secret is behind the food that we eat every day. Now, eating the right food can make you feel full and increase natural GLP-1 level in the body, and it is not as difficult or as expensive as you think. So, let's take a look at the evidence. Now, the first key here is to have adequate protein intake. A randomized double-blind crossover study published in 2013 showed that protein intake has a dose-dependent effect in increasing satiety by raising GLP-1, peptide YY, glucagon in a normal to overweight young males. So, in addition to GLP-1. Peptide YY is also a gut hormone secreted by the L cell in response to food intake. Its primary role is to reduce appetite and food intake by signaling the brain that the body has received sufficient nutrients. Peptide YY adds on receptors in the hypothalamus of the brain to reduce hunger. And increase feeling of fullness, which can lead to a reduction in food intake. It also slows down the rate at which、uh, food leaves the stomach, which can help to prolong feelings of fullness and reduce the likelihood of overeating. Now, however, currently there are no drugs that can simulate the effect of peptide YY. Now, in a 2007 randomized Double-blind crossover study. It showed that whey protein beverages produced a two to four hour suppression of ghrelin and increased GLP-1 and cholecystokinin、uh, in obese men. Now let's look at what ghrelin is. Ghrelin is a hormone primarily produced by cells in the stomach and acts on the hypothalamus in the brain 
to stimulate appetite and increase food intake. It is often called the hunger hormone because it is crucial in regulating appetite and food consumption. And ghrelin levels typically increase before meals and decrease after meals, which helps to regulate hunger and satiety. In other words, if you can suppress ghrelin, it can reduce the feeling of hunger. And choleocystokinin or CCK is another gut hormone that is released in response to the presence of food. CCK also adds on the brain to suppress appetite and promote the feeling of fullness, which helps to regulate food intake. So more CCK is better, more GLP-1 is better, and less ghrelin is better in terms of eating lesser. Now, so these studies show that protein intake plays a key role in increasing hunger-suppressing hormones GLP-1, peptide YY, and CCK. Uh, on the other hand, it also decreases the hunger-inducing hormone ghrelin. Now remember, Ozempic is a GLP-1 analog only, so it only targets GLP-1 pathway but enough protein intake has effects that is beyond what the drug can do. Now let's take a look at the second factor. The second factor is resistant uh, starch. Now, I know many people skip eating starch when they are trying to lose weight. Now, the key here is be behind what kind of starch should eat or skip. A resistant starch is a type of carbohydrate that resists digestion in the small intestine and passes into the large intestine where it can provide a source of food for beneficial gut bacteria through fermentation. And examples of resistant starch are cooked and cooled rice, potato, um, green bananas, legumes, whole, whole grains, and, and, and cooked and cooled peas as well. Now, animal studies has showed that resistant starch increased GLP-1 and peptide YY in rats or rodents. Now, while resistant starch is not uh, proven to increase GLP-1 levels in overweight and obese male in a randomized control trial, Resistant starch show to lower blood glucose level after meals and may have short-term beneficial effect. Now, interestingly, a in a more recent uh, different randomized study, resistant starch showed to increase GLP-1 secretion in normal weight uh, adults. So in other words, uh, uh, using uh, resistant starch as a maintenance food when your weight gets to normal level can keep you at the normal weight level. So it is good in that way. Now, the third factor that affects the, your uh, fullness is unsaturated fat. Now, fat is another scary word for people trying to lose weight. I don't want fat. I wouldn't want fat. But just like starch, the type of fat matters. And let's take a look here. Here are some of the studies about monounsaturated fatty acids that is from olive oil, it has been shown that to increase GLP-1 levels in human clinical trials of both healthy and overweight people with diabetes. Now, where can you get this type of um, monounsaturated fat? Now, mostly can be found in a so-called Mediterranean uh, diet, in a Mediterranean diet rich in this monosaturated fatty acids uh, has also been subjected to a controlled trial. It showed that it too uh, can increase GLP-1 concentration compared to a carbohydrate-rich diet in overweight people with insulin resistance. 
Uh, so here are just some of those examples. We see that there are many peer-reviewed published nutritional ways to increase GLP-1 secretion in the body. Now, although there is no direct evidence of a single food that can help people to lose 10 to 15% of weight in six months uh, as advertised uh, by the drug. It is important to know that lifestyle modification is all about consistency, persistence, and the willingness to sacrifice, particularly sacrifice some of the unhealthy food that you love to eat, like what? fried chicken, I don't know, french fries. But Ozempic weight loss is also not sustained without proper lifestyle modification. So chances are, once someone is on it, they will be hooked to the drug for way longer than they expect. Her. And again, weight loss drugs like Ozempic are prescribed with lifestyle modification, and there is no evidence supporting using the medicine alone to achieve the advertised weight loss effect. Now, I have also gone over the drug effect of Ozempic and its uh, counterpart or its uh, similar drug, Wigovi, uh, in my previous video. So if you want to learn more about that topic, please check that out. As someone who has spent my entire life um, studying and educating about drug effects, I know drugs are not always the solution, but rather the problem. I believe over-reliance on using medicines to fix chronic health problems is the root cause of even more health problems. A part of my goal here is to teach my viewers to use as few medicines as possible to achieve their desired health. If you are with me on this goal, I hope to see you again in my next videos. Now that is all for this week. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Eat healthily and stay healthy. Please take care. Bye.